Hello, I'm Sherry from Whole Circle Studio and welcome to the Botanical Beauties Block of the Month and Quilt Sew Along. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips as you begin to piece your seventh Botanical Beauties Block. I think this month's block looks like willow. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. In addition to this video, please be sure to refer to the tips included in the pattern, as well as the links below to additional video tutorials. Let's get started. There are only a few long pieces of paper that make up this month's block, which means less pieces to join together. But since some of these long pieces don't fit on a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and I wanted to make sure that the printing was accessible to everyone, we're going to need to do a little bit of template assembly before we can get sewing. If you've been making the wreath option blocks, we'll be assembling the paper pieces exactly how you have been for the background templates. If you've been making blocks for the grid option, this pattern assembly may be a bit new to you, so let's walk through it. Before we can paper piece, we need to assemble paper pieces G, J, K, and L for the grid option. For the wreath option, you'll be doing the same, but you only need to do so with paper pieces A and E. So let's work on assembling paper piece G. I went ahead and I trimmed the paper out on the outer thinner solid lines as I've been doing for all of the blocks or all of the paper pieces. For the piece that says paper piece G top, I went ahead and I trimmed right on the dashed line. For paper piece that says paper piece G bottom, I le left about a half an inch of paper past the dashed line. This way, when the paper pieces are joined, there's a little bit more stability because of the overlap, and I find that I'm more accurate. Um, so let's go ahead and go ahead and do this. So I find that it's easier to have the piece that's trimmed right against on the line closer to me. So I just go ahead, and again, I have an overlap. Uh, the, there's paper beyond that dash line on the bottom piece. And then I just go ahead and I line them up as best as I can. I'm looking for a, the line for the alignment of the pieces to be right on that dashed line. The lines are continuing or pretty darn close to it and the X is continuing. So that looks like a good alignment. I'll then go ahead and I'll use some single sided sticky tape and just tape right where those overlap. And then I tend to only tape on the printed side of the paper. Um, this I find I just leave sort of the flap. I find that sometimes if I tape on this side later when I go ahead and press the fabric, um, the iron may melt that tape, but it for some reason doesn't melt it if it's on uh, this side. The, the, the piece that I'm not, um, the side that I'm not gonna be applying the iron to. So then I go ahead, just leave this like it is, and I'm ready to start paper piecing piece uh, G. And then of course, now I, I think of this, these two pieces as one single piece. So for section one, I'm covering this whole section. I'm ignoring where the line is, that dashed line. It's now treated as one full paper piece. And I can go ahead and paper piece as I normally do. These instructions for joining are also in the preparation section of the pattern. So you'll then go ahead, as I mentioned, and do the same process for the other paper pieces. So for the grid, that means for L, K, and J. And for the wreath, you'll go ahead and do that for paper pieces A and E. If you're following my general fabric assignments, you'll notice that this block only has one fabric for the botanical. Of course, you can certainly make your willow super scrappy or explore your own color variation too. A couple of things to note for this block. There are a good number of funky angles in this block to make up this willow. Just go slow and use the method of folding back the paper as well as marking on the back with a pencil so that you can figure out what the correct angle of your fabric is before sewing. 
You can also go back and watch the previous videos and the foundation paper piecing general tutorial to see that method and you'll do great. Also, make sure that you press really well between piecing sections. You want to make sure that everything is nice and flat, especially at these steep angles before adding on the next piece of fabric. You'll also want to make sure that your fabric extends past the starting and stopping points on your seam by at least a quarter of an inch. For these really extreme angles, you might want to even have it extend past a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. If you don't pay attention, it is possible to have some of your raw edges, especially on these steep angles, showing after you sew on your next piece. And that's usually due to either one, it not being pressed well enough, or two, if you have less than a quarter of an inch of fabric bef um, before or after you stop sewing on the line. There are a couple of alignments when joining the sections that you may want to pay close attention to. Just look for the dots for clues and you'll do great. One last tip, if you're making the grid version of this block and you're not making the optional rounded corners, be sure to sew all the way to the edge of the paper when attaching section G10. I can't wait to see your willow block comes together. Thanks again for being here and for sewing along with us. I'll be back next month with even more tips. In the meantime, if you have questions or comments or something you'd like for me to feature in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to share your progress on Instagram using the Botanical Beauties hashtags found on the pattern so we can all check out what you're working on. You can also email me photos of what you're working on. My email address can be found in the pattern. See you next month and happy sewing.